People deluded, I'm back again. We're into the last week of the transfer window deadline, people. We have until the 31st of August to get the outgoing sorted, to obviously bring in an, an attacker and all of those kind of things. Now, allegedly, Mikel Moreno, all that's left for his transfer is to be officially announced. There are some ITKs claiming that he's been training with Arsenal's first team. Eddie and Ketty is putting the finishing touches towards the move to Crystal Palace, in which allegedly he'll be one of their, their club's highest earners. I know people are quick to get at Edu and why didn't he accept the Marseille thing? And people are quick to get at him when it wasn't even his fault that the Nottingham Forest deal didn't what happened. Eddie and Ketty didn't want to go there. Seems like he's going Crystal Palace, was still linked with Raheem Sterling. And there's a couple of isms and schisms, people. We've got a lot to go over. So allow me to share my screen and stop rambling. Don't forget to get the creative juices flowing. Smash the like button button and subscribe because we need to get towards 70k people let's keep going trust the process big up dg nation each and every time hope you all enjoyed carnival weekend and i'm probably alerting you lot to it now but you can hear my voice isn't as crisp and as proper as it normally is way too much enjoyment and excitement people but getting back to business now Eddie and Katie are given permission for Crystal Palace Medical ahead of Arsenal transfer from Arsenal. Well, ahead of transfer from Arsenal, apologies. There are also some ITKs claiming he's currently in Wimbledon, people, to do exactly what we're seeing here. At the time of making this vid, 32 minutes ago, David Ornstein said that our striker or soon to be former striker has given has been given permission to undergo a medical at Crystal Palace. The South London club are working to finalise agreements with Arsenal and the 25 year old striker having tabled a bid worth 25 million plus 5 million in potential add ons. Now, I know we could do a lot better at outgoings because. 30 million isn't that much, not necessarily in relation to Eddie Nketiah, but where you look at our football club, Eddie Nketiah is probably one of the highest earners people. And it obviously, owing to PSR, goes down as, you know, pardon me, um, 100% profit. And this is one of our record sales, is what I meant to say for him. He's a South London lad. Crystal Palace is a big club. And I'm sure him being a South Londoner, he knows that. He's getting regular football. Can't remember their gaffer's name with the greatest of respect to him. But him and the Brighton manager are two managers that I think are quite innovative and on the on the up people where their clubs are concerned. And if we all remember Crystal Palace, they played exciting football when they got rid of Roy Hodgson with the greatest of respect to him. Eddie, you know, you've made the club 30 odd million. You've scored a hat trick. You've won the number 14. You've been capped by the country. You've had some moments, you know, the Man United game at the Emirates. You've probably been partial your sell by date for a long time Arsenal need to reinvest you need to go to where you can play regular football it isn't foregone that he's going to start because you, you're competing with Mateta but whether he stayed at Arsenal went to Marseille went to Nottingham Forest or where he's going Crystal Palace there's always going to be competition and he would follow Emil Smith Rowe out of the exit door where we're concerned with Ramsdale Kivio and Nelson anything can happen but you'd imagine we're getting towards that stage anything can happen and money talks and if we could bring players in but we're probably getting to that stage where at least until January, maybe a couple of those names stay at the football club, even though I don't believe such where Aaron Ramsdale's concerned. So yeah, big up Crystal Palace. They've lost their first two games of the Premier League season. They've obviously seen Joshi and Anderson leave. Mark Gurr, he could be leaving. Elise, he's gone. I mean, I know I'm dream chasing, but could we have sniffed around if there was something to do for Eze? You know, they're spending 25 million plus add-ons for Eddie and Ketia. Could we have knocked off 30 million off an Eze transfer fee? Of course, I'm dream chasing. And if you're Crystal Palace, you're probably not on that. You want to keep Eze and bring in players, especially with what's going on at the club. And if Eze is to leave, they want top money. You know, they could get upwards of 70 million, whether he's worth that or not. Big up Eze because he's a quality player. And respectfully to Palace, they'll struggle to hold on to him. Palace are still talking with Newcastle about Gurhi, you know, Eddie and Ketty are one minute, it's Marseille, then it's Nottingham Forest, and it seems like he will stay in London with Crystal Palace. So we won't go over the same things, people, but there's some crucial sound bites. It's paraphrasing, it's understood they've agreed terms with Enketia that would make him one of their highest earners with Arsenal set to accept their offer of 25 million with a further 5 million add-ons. Arteta is believed to have sanctioned his departure despite concerns over a groin injury that obviously ruled Emil, Sm Emil Smith Rowe. <laughs> so apologies, I'm reading two things at once. Gabriel Jesus out of the win against Aston Villa. Now, Eddie's on the peripheral. But A, are we bringing in an attacker, whether that's a striker, a winger or a versatile guy of the Trossard ilk? Do we believe we've got enough in our existing ranks to cope with any potential injuries? Or respectfully to Eddie and Ketia, 
Arteta don't rate you like that. It doesn't really matter what's going on with Gabriel Jesus. God forbid if something happens to Kai Havertz and whatnot. I don't know where we're at, people. This article has also said we're interested in Nico Williams. We all know he has a £48 million uh, pounds release clause. Isn't going to happen, in my opinion. We have been linked with Jokerez, but I'm yet to see David Ornstein, Fabrizio Romano, respectfully to all of the journalists, the more creditable ones, really talk about Jokerez at length. It just seems to be paper talk. And with it being a week to go, I know he's played coy on his future at Sporting Lisbon. Maybe, I hope to be wrong, but probably not going to happen. This article on Kivior has also said, people, Palace are also understood to have registered an interest in Jakob Kivior with Arsenal deciding whether to sell the Poland defender or loan him. At this point, I know Kivio probably wants to play football and he probably needs to and we can bring money in. At this point, I'm leaning towards keeping him, hang around like a spare part. There's a lot of football. At some point, the the, ca the calendar list is going to be condensed and congested and we're going to have two games a week, three games in the in the scope of, of 10 days. Injuries can strike at any moment. On the face of it, if there is one area that personally I'm kind of quote-unquote comfortable with at Arsenal Football Club, it would be the defensive options. I know we've got a couple of knocks in and around the squad. Ironically, Tommy Asu is is, isn't available, but you've got Calafori, Tomiyasu, Timber, Zinchenko, Gabriel, uh, Saliba, Benjamin White, and because of the depth, we pro I've probably missed out a name there, really and truly. But it said Palace are interested. I don't know if if it was just a couple of vague conversations while they were getting the Eddie and Ketia deal wrapped up. If they want to bid, you know, if if you're Crystal Palace, do you try and get Jakub Kivior on a loan deal? If Arsenal, do you need necessarily want to sanction that? He's been linked with Spanish clubs. He's been primarily linked with Italian clubs. He's now been linked with Crystal Palace, but there's been no movement in, in relation to anything with that. Now, keeping up the theme with the athletic people, Jadon Sancho is still linked with a move away from Manchester United. Ironically, Chelsea and Juventus are looking at him. Raheem Sterling, obviously, He's not part of the plans at Chelsea. He's on a contract worth in excess of 300 grand a week. Is that his basic wages, excluding collective and individual bonuses? And he's got a deal until 2027. He wants to resolve that before holding talk. So is it a thing where if you want me to leave, you need to make sure I'm still getting paid, which is rightly so. If the club's going to freeze you out, it is what it is. Just make sure I get my money. A bit like Eddie and Ketia, because you did hear there were some issues around Nottingham Forest and wage demands. I understand it. Of course, you can't always put money first. But in any career, why would you want to uproot and, and change careers or change a job if you're going to get paid less? You've got living standards, people. We all know what's going on with Raheem Sterling. He's been linked with United, Villa, Palace and, and actually... I don't really feel there's any tangible proof with Raheem Sterling to Arsenal. Obviously, Manchester City have, you know, at Manchester City, Arteta and Raheem Sterling work together. We obviously need an attacker. Don't know if we're going to go for a young kind of unpolished gem or we're going to go for one of the more household names that it's been made clear their future lies away from their current clubs. But that is the only things that has been linked or people. It's, it's been more fan links with Raheem Sterling, in my opinion. Teams such as Arsenal are sure to carry appeal given their location, progression and stability, plus how well Sterling knows Arteta. But that is not something anything is developing if no switch materializes the matter will have to be revisited ahead of the january window and i mean at, at this point they probably want to loan him out or do something in that regards um what else have we got here ivan tony apparently could be going to the middle east which it's one of them where you probably because you made it clear you need to leave brentford like you just got to go somewhere because for all the arsenal spurs chelsea manchester united even manchester city links hasn't uh, got allegedly gone anywhere we've gone over the raheem sterling stuff people it's not really gonna go anywhere but it must be a bitter pill to swallow football's a game of opinions but i'm not saying raheem is not a good player but i prefer different kinds of wingers and the last two times mudrick has played he stunk up the joint now two different ends of the spectrum but if he's getting more of a game time or looking at Chelsea than you it don't look good apparently Adam Oda Lookman has a verbal agreement with PSG we've been through this before he has sparingly been linked with Arsenal some reports have said a 70 million euros offer um, and including potentially Jakob Kivio in a potential ca cash plus player transfer deal which Again, the window is closing. Is this something that's going to happen? He's been left out of a couple of matchday squads for Atalanta, been linked with a lot of clubs. Ivan Ferguson has been linked with... Evan Ferguson, apologies, has been linked with Arsenal and Manchester City. Can't see that happening, although he's kind of a rotationary option at Brighton. He's not necessarily one of the first names on the team sheet. You've got the Pedros, who's playing in the 10, the Welbeck and things of that ilk. A bit like when we bought Sesco. Was Sesco really at the point of entry to Arsenal Football Club going to be the first choice guy? Or is he someone that long-term can do that? 
that. Obviously, if the form's there, he could do that, but you're more of a rotation option. Could we do something with Mr. Ferguson of that ilk? Now, again, Sesco had a release clause that ultimately is irrelevant now because we didn't get him. But at the same time, you know, they're at the same kind of end in their development. Ferguson's going to cost a lot of money. His stock's probably taking a hit. He's going to cost a lot of money. Brentford are apparently sniffing around. I can't see us going for him, especially for 70 million for a talented but largely unproven 19-year-old who has had some injury issues, as that said there. I like him. I'd bring him if I could. Apparently, we're looking at um, Andreas Skob Olsen. He's been linked with us a couple of years ago, and he's been relinked with us now, the Danish international. Apparently, he's seen as the next Mohamed Salah. Can't rule out anything, but... Oof, I'm not sure. I like him. think he's a bit lightweight, but I think he's a decent player from what I've seen at the Danish international. And at 25 to 30 million euros, as you can see here, could that be a cut price rotationary option? The 24 year old has six, 20, sorry, the 24 year old has 26 goals and eight assists in all comps um, last season and made four appearances at the recent Euro 2024. A Danish reporter compared him to Eden Hazard and said you could compare him to I uh, to Iron Robin and Mohamed Salah, which to hear Hazard, Robin and Salah, we would love a player with half the ability of those three in it, but... I don't have an informed opinion to be even making those kind of comments. So I'll leave that with you. Arsenal will not stand in the way of Reese Nelson leaving. Again, we've let Fabio go, uh, Fabio Smith Rowe and Ketias go. And we've let a lot of players go. And Nelson's probably of that ilk. But I wonder, do the club sanction his exit, people, until or unless we've got alternatives at playing in place? I don't know, people. Uh, once again, we've been linked with Nico Williams, etc. Romano has said we're looking to try something. Apparently, Gabriel Jesus' injury is not. Um, as bad as first four and apparently you know um he's only going to miss a short period which is music to our ears provided he can stay fit Kingsley Coleman's been linked with a move to the Middle East could that be something for us to sniff Liverpool have been linked with Kingsley Coleman and also Chiesa you know I know Chiesa's got injury issues but could that be something to look at people apparently Liverpool have explored the conditions and he'd be keen on a Premier League move has been linked with Barcelona Charlie Patino has left us and joined uh Segunda Division um team Deportivo La Coruña his dad was a Deportivo fan I'm sure you've all seen the images of social media of him in the Deportivo kit as a as a young as a young child. Big up the 20 year old. We wish him all the best. I think he's a great lad. So yeah, do your thing, my guy. Mikel Moreno, as we know, has completed his medical. Allegedly, he's even trained with Arsenal's team. We've gone over the Kingsley Coleman stuff. Kind of what I was saying, Re um, Eddie and Ketty would be one of our top sales, really and truly, which shows that there's some work to be done. In the last recent years, Smith Rowe, Balligan, Slyly, Awobi, Joe Woolock, and Ketia. There's money to be made in Halen, but we shouldn't be able to count on one hand what's going on there. And obviously, you look, well, Oxley Chamberlain is fairly recent, you know, and Elka, considering what he is, what would he be worth in today's market? Alexis Sanchez and Mikitera is probably the worst swap deal in the club's history, really, or the worst swap deal in, in Premier League or maybe in Football League history. Van Persie went for big money, of course, and so did Cesc Fabregas. And obviously with inflation, what would these fees be now? But yeah, well, I'm rambling and we're going off. Osman's another one that's been linked with a move to the Middle East. I'm, I'm sure you would have seen his agent come out. You look at his wage demands and the salary package. I think a lot of clubs would be keen on Osman. It's just not making sense for anyone. Even Chelsea, you got more money than sense signing up. Can't pay them to put their checkbook away. Saying forget the Osman stuff at this moment in time. Arsenal are keen to negotiate an obligation to buy in any potential deal for Aaron Ramsdale. However, could you accept an option to buy provided they receive a notable loan fee and potential buyers also cover a large percentage of his 120 grand a week wages, which again helps us financially. Of course, we'd want to see these players gone permanently. Permanently it isn't to be people. We've gone over Eddie and Ketty. Apparently, you know, he's currently undergoing his medical at Crystal Palace. Uh, and again, as I said here, allegedly, you know, ITKs are saying that Mikel Moreno's trained with the Arsenal team, people. We've gone over this. We're close to finalising the deal. It seems to be done, people. Cedric could be getting a club in Holland, which is good for him. You never want to see people made free agents. Apparently, uh, what's his name again? Carl Jenkinson is, is part of the PFA's kind of free agent team and they're playing against Cambridge United as they aim to get moves away. We've also been linked with Dan Bentley. Apparently, we want an experienced number three goalie. Um, I know we wouldn't, but I was watching the Brighton game, man. Why would you want to be second or third choice, especially if we get Mr. Garcia from Espanol? But Jason still at Brighton, uh, you know, the way Brighton played football for the last few years and under their new gaffer and his ball playing ability and whatnot made me think, could Arsenal sniff around that? Now, Brighton, I don't know if they'll let him go, but yeah. Omar Rekic, which again is another forgotten man at the club, a bit like Kieran Tini. He needs to be registered to play in the Premier League, which isn't going to happen with our defensive 
um, prospects. He went on loan last year, and I guess there was some error in the paperwork because he actually couldn't play for a number of months, people. Apparently, he's looking to leave Arsenal permanently, which needs to happen, unfortunately, for him. For us, that means we get some money, but big him up and we wish him the best. Uh, as I said, Tony apparently has said yes to joining El Halal. Uh, a contract, 60 million euros, 60 million euros for three years. Must be all right, man. Do they need a content creator? Some details are emerging finally with Fabio Vieira's loan. I understand this is what Romano said. I understand Arsenal have included the following details into Fabio Vieira's loan to Porto. Loan fee will be based on objective slash specific conditions to match during the season. Penalty clauses if Fabio doesn't play 50% of all the matches, which is great because you either come back to Arsenal twice the player, you come back a better player to be sold on. Other than that, boy, and I mean, it sounds great in reality. And obviously, financially, he's going to have to play. But if you as a Porto manager and Fabio Vieira is struggling and you've got the people above you that agreed to this deal and you're in must-win cup games or must-win league games and you don't believe Fabio Vieira is the right option, you have to include him. Selfishly, as an Arsenal fan, I'm all for that. The loan fee based on objective slash specific conditions to match during the season, that kind of scares me. Is there sanctions like you pay less the more he plays? Or vice versa of that I don't know people It's very vague But do we ever know The intricacies of any deal So with that being said That appears to be Everything at this moment in time We've gone over Kivio And Ketia All of you We've gone over so many things For me to even start Sitting here and listening Turn on your notification bells Because live streams And videos And all these things are Always there Let me know your thoughts And most importantly Thank you for tuning in Stay safe Stay blessed Peace <laughs>